going on, you guys? Nick here with Nick Strength and Power. I've got a couple of interesting stories for you guys today. The first story that I've got for you guys today, the latest update of Ramon Dino, a back double bicep shot. Now, this is all we really got to see of Ramon today. I think he really was supposed to be a part of the press conference, but for whatever reason, the way they ran it, they didn't really give the classic physique guys much time. And I really think when they had uh, Chris, Terrence, and Breon out there, they were supposed to call, I, I really think they were supposed to call Ramon out there, and we were going to at least get to see him maybe talk with uh, Bumstead and Terrence. I was actually pretty surprised we didn't see Urz out there either. So all we really got to see from Ramon today after yesterday's little debacle about the weigh-in was this back double bicep, where of course he looks insanely impressive, and his back shots are even more considerably noteworthy because of the fact that a lot of people say that's still the weak point for Urz. It's those poses where I feel like Ramon inches a little bit ahead of Urz. Plus, I also think it was kind of weird that they had Breon in the press conference. Granted, he was top three last year, so that makes sense. But at the Arnold Classic, Urz and Ramon beat Breon. So you would think they would at least get to be in the uh, in the press conference. Like with Men's Open, you had basically, I think, the top 10 at least, and maybe a couple guys that might be outside the top 10 got to participate in the Men's Open press conference. But for Ramon and Urz not to be a part of the classic physique one seems like, uh, seems like an oversight. And I think judging by a lot of the messages that you guys were sending me about the press conference, I think a lot of you guys agree with that. I don't think uh, too many people were fans of the way that they've been organizing that press conference the last couple of years. It's been kind of weird. I am curious to see if this year they listen to the fans and if they get rid of the strobing lights and the laser beams and stuff at the finals for the Olympia. I'm very curious to see what the lighting and the backdrop is. It's going to be kind of funny if they didn't change it at all. And I think it was pretty unanimous that people didn't like the distracting backdrop and laser beam lights. But anyway, we're getting kind of far away from the point here. The point was Ramon looked very impressive and I would have liked to see him talk at the prejudging. And I think his chances here of cracking the top three are pretty impressive. Now, next up in the news, Michael Crizzo. So I feel like we did get to see a little bit more of Michael Crizzo, not just at the press conference, but some other shots and some other angles from the Dragon's Lair where he looks a little bit fuller. He, he doesn't look as flat as he looked in the initial shots that I was talking about this morning. And I'm a little bit more confident now, especially after seeing him at that press conference, hitting some poses next to all the guys, how big he actually looked just standing next to them in, in sweatshirts. I, I really think that, I still think, that Crizzo is going to be a threat to the top 10. I am pretty curious to see how his conditioning looks. I'm curious to see how his posing looks. But size-wise, I think he's there. I don't think there's any disputing that. I think we kind of know that at this point. And then seeing him next to those guys, I think he's certainly going to be big enough. I'm excited to see a call-out of Andrew Jack versus Michael Crizzo, two of the bigger guys. I would like to see a call-out of Andrew, uh, Big Rami, and Michael Crizzo, the three biggest guys in the lineup. And I guess Samson in there as well. If Samson really does weigh, you know, some of these numbers that we're hearing that he's weighed. He actually wasn't at the press conference either. Like I said, there was probably 10 to 12 open guys at the press conference. I'm kind of curious how they made that call on who to include, who to exclude. Because Crizzo was up there and Crizzo's never been to the Olympia before. And if there really were about 30 guys qualified, that means there was probably 20 guys that weren't uh, invited to that press conference or were made a part of it. So I'm kind of curious how they decided who those guys would be outside of like the top six guys. But anyway, Crizzo at the Dragon's Lair today looks a little bit fuller than Crizzo at the Dragon's Lair yesterday. A little bit more of a pump, a little bit more vascularity. It seems a little bit more detail. And I think we saw the same thing um, from Crizzo at the press conference. I do think he looked really round, really full, really big. I'm really just waiting to see what that conditioning is going to look like. That's what I'm waiting for. I really like what I'm seeing from Crizzo overall, but I, I, I'm just so curious to see how, how conditioned he is next to these other guys. Because even still in these updates, I don't feel like he looks as tight as some of the other updates that we saw of him on Instagram at like a couple weeks out. But I still am impressed with Crizzo. Now, next up in the news, let's talk about classic physique a little bit. We got a physique update from the Black Panther, who is a guy that I think is a very underrated classic physique competitor in this year's Mr. Olympia. He is... One of the smaller guys, he's a little bit shorter in stature, he's a little bit smaller in terms of overall muscle mass, but I think in terms of proportion and shape and symmetry, he's one of the most dialed in guys in this lineup. I really am impressed by his physique and I think he could be a guy, especially in classic physique, you can have these rare cases of these smaller guys that have just 
really good shape, really good symmetry, really good structure and proportion. And in a division like Classic Physique, they can really beat a lot of guys that are significantly bigger than them because that is more so what Classic Physique is about. Proportion, symmetry, shape, structure. Sometimes size isn't as important in Classic Physique. That tends to be the case. Look at Urz and Terrence, for example. Neither of them are the biggest guys in Classic Physique by a long shot, but they are two of the best because of their shape, their structure, and in Urz's case, his conditioning. Terrence is too, but Urz is more so known for that. And I think this guy here, the Black Panther, I think he could be another guy just like that. But one guy in classic physique that does have the size, Chris Bumstead. He's got the size and it works in his favor. He's also got really good shape, really good structure. Now you're three-time champion going for four. We got another physique update from him as well after the press conference. We didn't really get to see anything from the classic guys. Like I said, I mean, you did get to see Michael Crizzo pose for the men's open part of the uh, of, of the press conference, but the classic guys, they barely got to talk, let alone did we get the chance to see any of them pose. I mean, a couple years ago, I think was the year that uh, Breon was the one that started posing, taking off his clothes and posing, saying he was going to beat Chris. We didn't really get any of that for classic. Classic, I really don't think got – a fair amount of time on their on their press conference considering they're one of the most popular divisions nothing against the other divisions but i really feel like classic is the second most popular out of all the divisions behind men's open bodybuilding you could even make the argument that it's the most popular and they gave it seemed like the bikini girls women's bodybuilding figure wellness even men's physique it seems like they gave more time than the classic physique guys i really wish we would have got to hear more from them at the press conference but at least we did get this physique update from Chris. But again, I, I do wonder why, if Chris is going to post physique updates, why every time he's he's just in a tank top. He's in a tank top like every time he posts one. And it did look like, if you compare this to the update he posted yesterday, this was probably taken yesterday. So this is probably from the same, um, the same photo shoot session, not from today. But he did post it after the press conference. But he does say in the caption that he made weight with a little room to spare. Now it's time to eat. And he says that he's weighing um, just below 240 as of yesterday. So it's going to be interesting to see how he looks. He's a pretty big guy now. 240 pounds for classic physique is big. But with his height, he's allowed that. And again, I'm just curious, man. It, it, this is one of the only preps I really feel like that we haven't gotten to see Chris's physique. This is like the only prep it seems like every update has been in a tank top. It, this isn't a typical Chris Bumstead thing. So whether it's a new coach thing, a honey Rambod strategy, a new approach, or maybe he just wants to save it for the stage. I am curious how he's going to look. I, I'm still confident he's going to win, but I don't know what to make of this new approach by Chris. I really do think it's unusual because while he's showing us something in this update, what can we really, I mean, we can't really tell anything from this. It's just like a most muscular. Yeah. He looks big. He looks lean. And it's kind of zoomed out, kind of hard to tell. That's about all you can really say. But even as confident as I am that Chris is going to repeat and earn his fourth title, there is still a little part of me that wonders, is there a chance Chris doesn't win this thing? Is there a chance we see a new Classic Physique Olympia champion crown this year? Never say never. It, it could happen. Now, the final story that I've got for you guys today, some training clips from Samson Dowda at the Dragon's Lair today. So we didn't get to see Samson, like I said, at the press conference, even though he's a guy that I feel like a lot of people have been talking about lately. The second biggest guy in this lineup in terms of body weight, or at least that was the case during the offseason and build up to this show, he was over 330 pounds. Nobody else was really even close to that aside from Big Rami. Uh, maybe Michael Crizzo and Andrew Jack were in the 300 plus pound territory um, when they were in their offseason, but certainly not anymore. We don't really know what he's weighing now because right now it certainly seems like Andrew Jack might be the second biggest guy in the lineup because he was 292 at less than a week out. Andrew Jack was. We don't know what Samson weighs. But I would have I would have liked to hear from him at the press conference, and he's a guy that I think does have probably a better shot at the top ten than Blessing, maybe a better shot at the top ten than Raphael, even though both those guys um, were at the press conference. So I'm curious to see where he lands in this lineup as well. And like I said, I could not be more excited for the prejudging tomorrow. This is going to be a hell of a show, and I don't want to miss a second of it, and neither do you guys, so make sure you hit that subscribe button. I know you guys want to watch all the Olympia coverage, so make sure you stay tuned to the channel um, and leave a like on this video. And as always, I want to thank the Arnold Classic for sponsoring all of the Olympia coverage this week. 
And to celebrate the 35th annual Arnold Classic, they're running a limited time pay-per-view sale. Enjoy all of the weekend's nonstop action for just $35. Don't miss out. Purchase yours today before the sale is over. Head on over to arnoldsports.com and check it out. Love you guys. Appreciate you guys. Nick Strength and Power signing out. I think that every bodybuilder has something unique. Uh, if it is the pose off or if it is a certain pose that really closes the deal. I think the action is a lot of it in a combination of symmetry, of size, muscle separation, definition, and the performance so that you can show all this quality that you have. Because they have a lot. All right, guys, don't forget to click that like button and subscribe to this channel if you enjoy the content. Also, check out my Instagram at Nick Strength Power, my Facebook page, which is simply Nick Strength and Power, my secondary YouTube channel, Nick Strength and Vlogs, for vlogs and bonus content that you will not see on this channel. And consider subscribing to my third YouTube channel, Nick Strength and Pokemon, which is all things Pokemon and trading card games completely unrelated to this channel. So if you're into that, Give that one a look, and all links to merchandise and social media will be in the description box below. If you guys want a Nick Strength and Power t-shirt, that will be in the Shopify link below. Have a great day.